Hi, my name is Sahana Rai. Today we are here to discuss about something very important and we have a panel of experts who are going to discuss with us in detail. We are talking about the most common yet the most undertreated and underreported gynecological problem of India and which has direct impact on a girl's daily physical activity and her emotional well-being. 68% of them are missing school and drop out of school as well. It makes close to 60% of the girls unable to participate in sports. Among women, it renders 77% of them incapable to do any household activity. It takes a toll on a woman's professional life as much as 50% of them remaining absent from their workforce. Yes, we are talking about dysmenorrhea, commonly known as period pain. And today we are here to talk about dysmenorrhea with a panel of experts. I'll start with introducing Dr. Mohan Gadam. Dr. Mohan Gadam is a senior obstetrician and gynecologist practicing for more than three decades and runs his own hospital, Eva Medical Center in Thane and Andheri. He is a renowned fertility consultant, endoscopic surgeon and vaginal surgeon. Amishi Mehta. Amishi is an international corporate trainer known for her signature innovative programs. She is also a business coach, consultant, life coach, speaker, author and invited as visiting faculty for business and entrepreneurship. She has empowered and coached thousands of diverse individuals and groups and has worked with entrepreneurs and their top leaders from more than 43 countries. Amishi is an author of the world's largest global magazine, entrepreneur.com. Mr. Panchanand Rautre. Mr. Rautre is a marketing director at Blue Cross Laboratories and has been organizing women health awareness workshop across India for last 12 years. He is a veteran of 34 years in pharma selling and marketing and has deep medical behavioral insights of virtually every district in India at his fingertips. We have Ms. Mona Punjabi with us, who has got 14 years of professional work experience. She comes from IT background, and now she wanted to give back to the society, so she pursued her passion, and she is a visiting faculty with a lot of management colleges, and also she continues to pursue her passion of writing for many premier publications across India. Ms. Nabomita Mazumdar is founder of Nabomita.com and winner of 100 Women Achievers Award by Ministry of Women and Child Development India. She has been invited for lunch with Honorable President of India at the Rashtrapati Bhavan. She is a sought after HR expert among various industries and with new age internet startups. Dr. Prabhu Kasture. He is a postgraduate in the field of public health from Seth GS Medical College and KEM Hospital, Mumbai. He has more than 17 years of experience, which is a blend of developmental and pharmaceutical sectors. He has worked with various reputed organizations like UNICEF, PATH, Mumbai Corporation, and State Government of Maharashtra. Currently, he is working as head medical affairs at Blue Cross Laboratories. Let's start with the discussion. Let me start with you, Mona. You tell me, when did you first hear about dysmenorrhea? So, well, I heard, heard about dysmenorrhea about uh, two years back. Uh, of course, I experienced a lot of the symptoms, but I did not know that medically it was called by such a name. Uh, in fact, today morning itself, when I was leaving home and I just had a chat with my mom, and I told her I'm going for a discussion on dysmenorrhea, she was like, okay, what is this? I have never heard of something like this. So when I explained to her that, you know, this is something that we women go through uh, at least one point of time in our life, and uh, we don't know the name for it. So, you know, so most of us, I think, know what it is, but we don't know what it, uh, what is actually called in the medical sense. Navomita, do you want to add some points? Um, since my uh, childhood, I have, um, I have seen women in my family suffering from something which is not discussed, which is not good to discuss, which is very taboo oriented right uh, even when I suffered my mom took me to the doctor but no one told me any term about it so since my teenagers uh, did have medicines about it but no madam sorry it was not supposed to be mentioned even even said by, by any human under the sun so that's it uh, so I've been um, actually very vaguely remember in school when somebody who was close to me and uh, she was taken for something and possibly had 15 days of break every other month. And uh, I kept wondering what that was about or possibly if they suffered from something radical. Um, eventually, I think in my 
30s, I was uh, privileged enough and have uh, was acquainted with some doctors wherein I uh, understood about the term uh, dysmenorrhea. And that's when I actually got acquainted with it uh, from a colleague who was actually uh, very much in pain, had to take about half an hour breaks, and I didn't understand for a month uh, what was happening or what was that about is when I was introduced to something like dysmenorrhea. So. Dr. Gadam, can we have like a medical perspective about what is dysmenorrhea for people to understand? Yeah, uh, this term dysmenorrhea is actually uh, been used uh, in, uh, uh, in layman's language as period pain or menstrual pain or menstrual cramp and many more things which have been uh, named as dysmenorrhea, but the scientific term is dysmenorrhea. So the pain which is associated with menses uh, or the pain which begins before menses. So, and, and on the larger term, we, we broadly divide them into primary and secondary dysmenorrhea. Uh, primary dysmenorrhea is the one which uh, usually begins with the onset of first menses. Uh, scientifically, again, known as menarche. There are four stages of puberty, uh, pubertal development, and one of them is adrenarche, thalarche, pubarche, and menarche. And menarche comes as the last uh, uh, step in the de pubertal development. Uh, and that is where the pain usually begins. Uh, and the pain is likely to begin in the first year also if it doesn't begin on the first uh, period itself. And usually over a period of time with uh, increasing age and probably once they get married and have a baby, then the degree and intensity of pain gradually goes down. Oh, Dr. Kasturi, would you Yeah, like I would like to add a uh, few things here. When we said this, this means abnormality. Men is every month and Rio is flu. So dysmenorrhea, some abnormality associated with the menstruation. The reason, as uh, uh, Dr. Gadam said, uh, you classify as primary and uh, secondary dysmenorrhea. So primary usually is without any pathology, associated pathology. And secondary dysmenorrhea obviously would have some underlying pathological conditions. For example, endo uh, endometriosis or any pelvic inflammatory infections. Now, when I say primary dysmenorrhea, the primary cause for this pain would be uh, the implication of increase in a hormone which is called as prostaglandin. So the increase in prostaglandin leads to uh, increased contractions of the uterine muscles and thereby those cramps and the pain uh, happens. So let's go on to understand why is dysmenorrhea such a silent affair or spoken only in closed circle? I request Mr. Panchanan to start or give us some insights. Uh, so this dysmenorrhea per se, you know, as Babubita said very rightly, uh, it is thought to be something very personal. Uh, something should not be talked about and you have to talk it with only female folks. You cannot talk to your father even, you cannot talk to your brother, you cannot talk to your friends even. It is something, you know, the society has not accepted. And in my last uh, 12, 13 years of experience, when I have dealt with this kind of situation, uh, what I personally find is, uh, we as a society have kept it under the closet. We do not want to bring it out. Uh, what is the implication on the society we are not trying to appreciate? Because, you know, 50% population is female ladies. And, you know, as I was talking to MEC just before the session, um, maybe around 70% in this is group out of this 50%. You know, the implication of it is very, very bad on the society. And because, you know, 50% of the population are suffering and we are not talking about it. We need to talk about it. We need to bring it out and discuss it. And we need to find a remedy for this. Blessing, nature, curse, rite of passage. These are the monikers given to period pain. I hope that everyone has seen our campaign. All of us, I'm sure, have gone through a campaign. We are talking about break the cheat chain, which beautifully captures the emotions. The question is, why so many monikers have been given to period pain? Even if no moniker uses period pain, we, we tell the girls every time, period, ye to hota rehta hai. I mean, it's not such a big deal, you know? How do we, how do we break, a, break the myth around it? Why do we hide it, right? Uh, we hide it for a, a assumption that nobody wants to hear it, right? As he said, if we make the data available that so many people of the entire population is already suffering, it will become a generic situation. Nobody would want to hide it, right? Nobody want to, wants to hide a malaria or a diphtheria, which is, which is so, so much in, in, in common knowledge. 
this one there's a huge amount of apathy that we had created around it right and this is the main reason i mean main reason why uh, changing the society is getting so difficult i mean uh, last year we had uh, had this uh, discussion on implementing menstrual leaves right and there's this uh, par parliamentarian from arunachal pradesh she proposed the uh, bill now uh, the moment she did she had data with with her right and she had a very logical reason and she is not the first one 1991 bihar government implemented menstrual leaves two days a month any woman can take so our country is way way ahead of time but here's what happened last year the moment the parliamentarian did that members from media social media started talking about this will alienate women in workforce women came up in in groups saying you know, who who needs them we are we are too forward we are too we are too we are too too good for for such leaves right very few stood up and said no it's for the it's for the larger generation it's for the larger mass of people we need to have a policy like this so at the core of it the entire apathy towards discussion towards hiding a such a crucial issue which is happening to as he said almost 70% of the generation i mean 70% of the women alive in 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 india right now every month we really need to speak up uh, see i do not know whether it is a question of forwardness or backwardness the fact remains it is a problem and when somebody is having the problem it is so severe sometime you know you are not attending to your work you call it absenteeism it is more dangerous than absenteeism is presenteeism yes. you are there in the office but you are not there you are not able to concentrate on your work see the day period starts possibly that day you have severe pain you can take a leave but two days before that is pre menstrual syndromes which dr mohan will agree with me dr prabhu will agree with me and two days after that it is again you know you are having some kind of a disturbance in your mind so five days out of this five days four days you are present at your work but you are not focusing on the job whether you are a professor whether you are a professional anything you are doing you are not focusing on your job that is actually more bad that is actually worse than absenteeism basically this is something which is rather personal we, we don't discuss uh, pain during menses or our menses in open uh, public forums or in a group of people even at home as a matter of fact probably we will speak about it only to ladies members not to you won't speak it to your father you won't speak about it to your brothers so something which can't be really discussed and and besides that outside in society if you start discussing there are people around you to make fun of it more than anything else and that is how things go in a vicious cycle so basically one has to accept that this is something which is normal it happens to your friends it happens to your brothers it happens to your sisters it happens it happened to your mother also so we will have to take it as a, a normal so we, I, rather than making an awareness about it will be more so education and awareness something which will bring things on the ground more than anything else yeah so that we and and the society has large has to accept that like you know the senior office bearers and all that they also will have to give importance to something like this otherwise the females will not come out openly and and there are genuine cases where the, the degree of pain is so much that they will have to remain indoor often and and if you see the statistics you will see almost 30 35% of the patients with grade 3 grade 4 um, uh, dysmenorrhea or severe menstrual cramps and pain they usually stay indoor and they don't return to the office or they don't go to their schools also so this is the magnitude of problem that we are facing so but as professional i just uh, you know got through an article uh, where one of the reasons cited by the women group was uh, you know uh, the bosses would compare uh, you know for appraisals with the uh, yeah, yeah. other Very gender true. colleagues and yeah. it is a step back uh, yeah yeah every corporate woman who has worked in the corporate forum would agree to that because you you will be given that as a reason for not giving giving you your promotion even if you have put in other times you know yes. more work hours and you know you've compensated but you will never get acknowledged for it so that yeah, yeah it's very yeah. true and and things like uh, you know people will look at female uh, um, um, uh, candidates for selection that someone who is going to stay away from work every month is probably may not be considered on yeah. the ground yeah, yeah. so there there was a thought that whether whether there should be a holiday on day one of menses yes. for all the females 
uh, irrespective whether they have dysmenorrhea or they don't have dysmenorrhea. So that also has been considered and probably people will think about it and a day might come that probably they will be given a holiday. Mm -hmm. So you have to take it in a positive and a better perspective more than anything oh. else. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's always a sunny side to everything. When uh, the amendment to the Maternity Benefit Act was implemented, six months of leave. Everybody says women will not be hired. Uh, there were news media sharing data on how women are being hired less. And then came Zomato. Parental leave to everyone. I hope companies like this set an example. And we have, yes, government will definitely make changes. Government will make policies, right? Which, which will bring more women and ensure women stay in the workforce. But I think we ensure, we as a corporate, we as an industry, ensure women stay at, at workforce through the policy and the systems that we create. So let's discuss more than that. Uh, I'd like to add that uh, essentially we forget that we are majority uh, traditional society still. And we have a lot of uh, villages still existing wherein this is completely a taboo and they even refrain from mentioning it. And about 30, 40 population which is actually educated, we still only talk to possibly our closest peers and that's about it. We did not even discuss it with our parents or siblings or XYZ. And uh, that's something that needs to break. That's something that needs to be added as a value. And uh, definitely given this forum that we are sitting with more experts. absolutely and experts and men around yeah uh, which i in actually itself, wanted to highlight that look at this, absolutely. this itself is the first sign of so progress. it's a good look initiation of about it, actually it's openly talking yeah. about a subject which yeah. is very very personal First, to a woman yeah and discussing it in a forum like this so definitely. and the people driving the campaign are also men which is more interesting, Absolutely. you know, yeah. So, which uh, I get more, more yeah. cheers and kudos yeah. to men for, yeah. sure, for taking yeah. the initiative. <laughs> and something very important is that we, everybody must realize that sometimes the, the degree of pain is so phenomenal that a, a person who is actually suffering only will understand. And and what's, what is said is that, especially when it comes to male uh, partners, they what is said is that the male members will not realize the pain of menstrual cramps. Yes, in they fact, the next question They will not realize the pain is, of delivery. Yes. They will not realize the pain of removing the glitter. <laughs> and they will not realize the pain of removing the nail polish. <laughs> so, so you have to sit yourself into that chair to really realize what is the kind of pain that they suffer and, and at least have some, some humanity. Stilettos were invented for men to ride horses. We alienate men from discussions. We make sure it remain, it remain uh, focused only to for women. But yeah, look at their um, uh, participation, and I we definitely need more male champions for the cause, and essentially more um, companies bringing in policies to implement the change. I mean, one thing is yes, changing the policy, giving the leaves and all. Second thing is bringing the support system, right, within the companies. I mean. For example, there are so many companies, no, uh, I mean, with all due credits to every industry that is earning, uh, we have so many packages selling Kirati's treatment for hair, right? But there are no menopause pro product which has been implemented in the market. And we have so, such a huge amount of women moving towards, a generation moving towards that area who do not have uh, any family support, who do not have any societal support, who are challenged in their career Family-wise, they are stretched beyond limits. Yes, they may have the financial power, but there is no support system in terms of medical and health for them to take through that kind of a change. So I, I really look forward to a lot. I mean, this is just a beginning of the discussion. I, I look forward to a lot of support from male champions. Thank you. But again, the same question, like uh, taking ahead whatever you said right now, Dr. Gadam. In general, women experience more greater pain than men. You know, still women are likely to be less well treated than men for the painful symptoms. You know, especially in the rural areas, doctors really like don't take period pain seriously. What What are your thoughts? Like, what can be done? No, I think that's the mindset of the society here in India, especially in rural India, where the the, the degree of importance which is uh, given to a daughter is much less, and the amount of money that you would like to spend on your daughter uh, is little. You know, uh, it's yeah, dicey situation. Yeah, yeah. women, so, girls are not wanted. Yeah, so they are not being treated. Yeah. I mean, that is something which will come with education only, and it is growing, but it is growing at a slower pace. Yeah, so it should grow. I mean, equality is something which is very important. Our prime minister also talks about it. The whole world is talking about it. So we have to come to that situation. But, but this is quite a bit of uncivilized uh, uh, rural population, and uh, it will take some time for it to. 
So, but it has to be there and it has to come out. Right. Right. Yeah, so Mona. Especially true because uh, if you listen to uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi's uh, latest campaign, which is Bharat Ki Lakshmi, uh, we have something like this where we are give, giving women that kind of a position, and still you will hear, like even in even in the urban areas, you will hear a lot of parents telling their children that, uh, you know, uh, the pain of a pregnancy or a delivery is far greater than. A so you better pain. prepare so you for this. Prepare for this pain, like you know, kind of gear up for this. This is just the start, which is not right. I mean, you know, it needs to be any pain is pain. It's it has to be addressed in the right way. So, I mean, why suffer when there are options where it can be handled and situation can be made comfortable? So, it's important that we make that first step. Uh, just to correct uh, one point here, we say it is greater than a labor. Uh, you said labor pain would be greater than the uh, dysmenorrhea pain, but it is not so. Uh, in severe uh, dysmenorrhea, Dr. Gadam would uh, agree that uh, perhaps it would be more severe than the uh, labor pain in certain. Yes, they are all uh, very conditions. severe. I mean, you have you can quantify them. Not all, everybody suffers with great for uh, dysmenorrhea, but there are say maybe around 20, 30 percent of the patients will have severe grade, grade one or very severe dysmenorrhea where they actually remain, they go crazy, they cry, they remain in their shell, they don't want to come out of a room and all sorts of things. They will not go to the school, they will not go to work and, and you know, and, and the, the female partners in the house, they have to sympathize with them, they have to be with them. Counseling is very, very important. And, and even if it is part of your routine, it's something which needs to be taken care. So either by medication or for whatever means. Uh, perhaps culturally, uh, you know, the way we have grown up is always, you know, uh, if it's a male child, uh, don't cry like a, a girl, uh, right? Uh, then uh, referring to one of the uh, stalwart dialogue, Mard ko kabhi dar 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 nahi hota. <laughs> right? So that is how the perception is. That you know the uh, females would be more uh, bear a lot of biologically it is true, it is true, uh, but then both nakre, you know that kind of stuff would come out as a uh, response. So the pain that they would uh, complain of uh, would would be of less credibility, and uh, men would you know uh, again uh, uh, take the pain to an extent. As I said, mart ko dard nahi hota. That stoic nature of that men would not uh, complain of pain unless and until it is a real pain. Again, like in inverted commas, what real we really it needs to be defined. So that is how that perception still is there and uh, perhaps would continue also. Uh, just as we romanticize pain all our life, what is the downside of avoiding dysmenorrhea? Does it affect yeah. woman health? I'll just add to that yeah. question, asking what are the solutions or what are the medications available for? No, there is something called idiopathic dysmenorrhea or primary dysmenorrhea, which is commonly seen in young girls, which begins at menarche and then gradually starts getting lesser and lesser. So quantification wise, they start feeling better as they age advances. Uh, but any patient who comes to you, probably you will have to do a thorough examination and do some basic investigations to confirm that there is no associated pathology inside. So in absence of an associated pathology, this is something uh, which will not really harm them on long term basis. But, but at the same time, you need to give her pain relief. So every month that she gets pain, you need to be, because otherwise their entire activities are affected, day-to-day -day life is affected, their education is affected, their services are affected, and it takes a toll on their um, um, marital life also. So, so that is something which needs to be taken care. Even if there is no associated cause, the quantity of pain sometimes is so much, so phenomenal that we will have to address that issue, the doctors will have to address that issue. Everybody in the family also will have, they, they will have to also, you know, confine in them and then go a little steady, or slow on them, so on certain issues. So all this will have to be done, yeah. I've heard a lot of mothers telling their girls that, you know, when they experience pain, which is a little beyond that they can bear. Uh, many parents, uh, many mothers, I would say, tell their girls that, you know, we would not take you to a gynecologist because if they give you medication, it will create a hormonal imbalance. Yeah, it will affect I've your heard this so many times. If you could share some insights of you know, how this kind of No, works. usually hormones is not the first line of treatment. Okay. You have painkillers, NSAIDs are there, so many other like uh, Coxter inhibitors are there, which can be used for pain. But the problem here is that this is something which is recurrent illness. Yeah, okay. And even if she has to take painkillers for say day one, day two, day three, where the amount of pain is maximum, day four probably if the pain is less, she will not take. So day one, day two is maximum pain. 
And if she has to take every month for say three tablets per day for three days in a month, so COX-2 inhibitors and NSAIDs and all that, they are not reasonably safe. Mm. So mm. on long-term basis, chronically, if you consume mm. these medicines, it causes hyperacidity, peptic ulcers, mm. nausea, vomiting, and there are many, many side mm. effects of these drugs, blood dyscrasias and all that. Mm. So they have to be taken uh, with caution only. Yeah. So And then the next line of treatment is uh, con uh, hormonal uh, contraceptives or pure progestin derivatives. But they have not been quantified as, or uh, their use has not been very highly specific and sensitive. So it's... Okay. It is not necessary that each and every person will get relief. So maybe mm. part of the patients or say a few percentage of patients will get relief. Mm. But here, here there is here there is no gold standard for management of dysmenorrhea. Mm. Mm. So they are all hypotheses. So you have painkillers, you have hormones, yeah. you have NSAIDs, and you have certain um, dietary alteration like mm. ginger and all that, or certain Chinese herbal medicine probably is supposed mm. to be doing a little better job and. And there are certain procedures like acu acupuncture, acupressure, and transdermal nerve stimulations and all that. They give some help. So yoga therapy is there and many more things are there. So whichever means and modes, if it works in a given patient, that is something which is good. And, and what works better in non-invasive fashion, we'll have no side effects on the patient. So we can try that out. So, so, doctor, what you're suggesting is uh, we have apps for ovulation, right? We can figure out how many days are we away from our next menstruation. So, this way we can actually, since we live in this jet set, jet set speed and we do not have time to even spend one hour away from our work, we can actually schedule um, the, the uh, supportive uh, medicines or supportive living standards that you're mentioning, right? To avoid that kind of a pain situation for pain relief. No, things like NSAID, the hormonal preparation should not be given prophylactically or in anticipation of a pain. It has to be given only when there is pain. Yeah, because otherwise the number of days that you'll be taking these medicines will be too far. And sometimes some kind of dysmenorrhea, the pain will start at the time of ovulation and will continue during period. So it's almost 14 days to 18 days. So you can't keep giving these medicines. And by taking medicines today, it will not relieve your pain on day one. Yeah, so it doesn't work like that. But what really works is counseling, behavioral therapy, uh, little ad adjustments in their life and exercises. And, you know, you need to understand that this is the pain which has to be taken in the stride itself. So, so whatever, whatever is the degree of pain, what you can bear, you should not take medication. What you can't bear, then you take medication. So you should be pain free or you should uh, be reasonably good. And your day to day activities and work is not really covered that is how so it is purely symptomatic so it is uh, it is something which uh, you know you can't you don't treat a disease and then the patient will be cured because in primary dysmenorrhea or spasmodic dysmenorrhea what it is called it is not necessary that there is a presence of a disease it is it's a normal physiology so they like what dr prabhu said that prostaglandins are released and prostaglandins cause tonic contractions of the uterine musculature and lower abdominal musculature and cervix so and that gives rise to pain and then it also it also causes loss of blood supply to the surrounding mm -hmm. tissue by constricting the vehicle uh, vessels which are present and then the pain receptors get stimulated so and that gives us to severe pain so it's it is just part a variation of a normal physiology and also depends quite a bit on patient mindset also there are some patients who are little you know they are not able to accept pain so easily they they will probably bear more pain they will have to accept more pain a bit bit there are patients who can really take quite a bit of pain. So they, for them, it is things are okay. Like, so they, they will be able to control and manage it and take care of it without taking any medication. So what you can do without taking medication is the best thing. Yeah. So, so behavioral therapy, counseling, meditation, yogas, and all that, if it works, it should be tried and it should be done always. I'll say two anecdotes. See, one part is the therapy. The other part is the mindset in the society. Two anecdotes I'll say with you. You know, normally it is felt. It is nature's way of, you know, preparing a girl to be a mother. Every month she should have pain. So, so when she is carrying the child and delivering, she will be able to bear that pain better. And this is anecdote I'm sharing, which is shared with me by people to in my last 12, 13 years of doing these workshops. And point number two, it is not only a problem in the rural areas, as Anna said, it is more of a problem in urban areas also, what Mona said. Because it is felt if you're taking medication or you're going to a doctor who will give you medication, 
it is going to disturb your whole body. Possibly tomorrow you will be not become a mother. This is again said by certain people. A third thing I am remembering now. Some very intelligent person once told me, so like in nature, you have summer season, you have winter season, you have rainy season. Uh, this is, you know, nature's way of, you know, the lady will have menstruation every month. So what is the problem? She has a pain, she has to bear it. If there is a pain, she has to bear it and she has to carry through her life. The question is, if in winter, are you wearing the same summer dress? You are wearing winter dress or not? So if you are having a problem, you have to go to a doctor and if whatever he advises, if Dr. Mohan is advising something, follow that. But remaining at home, suffering from the pain or suffering from this problem is not the answer. So it's necessary is to change the mindset of the society. We need to work on that. Uh, uh, perhaps, you know, uh, pain, pain itself is a complex uh, subject and very, very subjective. So every individual would react differently to the same, uh, you know, amount of stimulus that we give for pain. Having said that, the suffering that we are talking about, if, yes, as in routine, if it is considered that it will be there, some behavioral, uh, health-seeking behavior change should come into uh, consideration and approach a doctor. Medications or non-medications therapy definitely would follow as per the individual uh, you know, basis and the advice of the uh, doctors. Important is the approach to the uh, doctor is important. You take advice of a doctor and don't say that this is a routine and where it can go on every month. So this is something not normal. As I said uh, in the opening remarks, uh, this is something abnormal. So we need to look at from that uh, perspective. So uh, I'd just like to add that uh, mostly coming from a personal perspective, 70% uh, of women will uh, power through anything that they're going through unless it is uh, the waters over in their in over their head essentially is how we are built culturally and we will still continue to be that way uh, then we will approach a doctor when it actually if we are not <laughs> in over our heads so if if uh, dr gadam would agree but that's that's how i think is a stigma which we need to break first i think i think amongst the males and females if you compare i think the females have tremendous capacity to bear pain to bear stress to take stress for the family, for themselves, for others around, and and they have a, they have a real phenomenal capacity to digest. Mm -hmm. Survival of fittest is more common in females mm -hmm. than in males. So if they are twins and if they are born in the similar conditions, probably the females can stand the stress uh, at that particular time more than the males. So they survive better, and and it is mother is the god. That is what they say. So everything for the male offspring also comes from mother. The DNA is shared by the father and the mother, but the DNA which is present in cytoplasm, called mitochondrial DNA, is shared only by mother. It is not shared by father. The cytoplasm and the mitochondria comes for the male offspring as well as the female offspring from mother. So that is the gen genesis, and mothers are, that is how they are called, that they are, they are gods for everybody, mothers. They are, in fact, at times, kept supreme to the god also. Yeah, so the first thing you would love and praise your mother, then, then the God, yeah. That's quite insightful. We are having a very nice uh, and uh, impactful discussion. So really, like, we are happy with the way it's going and the inputs that you all are sharing, it's really working. So let's just go through some uh, stats and numbers that we have. I'll just read through it. When an adolescent girl's education is compromised due to dysmenorrhea, it impacts the society and the whole nation. When a girl receives education, she marries later, has fewer, healthier children, and is likely to experience lesser sexual violence. A woman's future earnings grows with every extra year of primary education. Also, with every 1% of proportion of women with secondary education, a country's annual per capita income grows by 0.3%. Closing the unemployment gap between adolescent girls and boys would result in up to 1.2% increase in the GDP in a year, right? So dysmenorrhea makes 68% girls miss school every month. Question is, how do we spread awareness about dysmenorrhea in schools and colleges? So I feel uh, I have a few, um, I'm acquainted, blessed and honored to have uh, friends as doctors and uh, family as doctors. And uh, they put in their effort in um, actually, so having any short, sort of short courses uh, that is actually imparted in a story 
to young girls uh, is something a lot of them do besides their practices, uh, which is uh, in NGOs and things like that, and a lot of non-profits that actually take up these things. So that's something that we can do is have short uh, courses and training sessions for religious to educated women that would definitely uh, help uh, path breaking and the taboo on dysmenorrhea for sure. To add to that, I think what we what can also be done is uh, for young girls when we have puberty training, uh, maybe kind of create awareness for uh, girls who are just entering their teenage. Maybe they can add uh, elements of this and kind of put in specifics of how this can be dealt with. Uh, I would also say don't restrict this only to the girls. Also enlighten your boys because at a young Very age, important. if you can enlighten the boys, it will help to a great yeah. extent. Um, also, when you have your PTA meetings, of course, we don't have it in colleges, but in schools, we do have a regular parent-teacher association meeting. Maybe plan sessions where you can even enlighten the mothers because the, your mother is your first teacher, right? So if she gets aware, the whole family gets aware. So, you know, maybe these are the three places because these are three uh, stakeholders in a woman's life. Like the person who she's maybe spending her life with maybe your brother and also her mother and the, the vicinity around so at this level maybe if they can do it it would be a great help uh, also an uh, article that i had read recently about an ngo uh, doing something very wonderful and beautiful uh, which i'd like to share is uh, the girls actually write letters to their mothers explaining how they're feeling okay and they kind of orate it without actually talking to them and this was done in sort of a forum like a PTA. And uh, they actually uh, were, the only thing they did was got up and hugged their daughters that they didn't know that's the kind of pain that they were going through or the things that they refrained. So that's one part of education that we can definitely take forward. And uh, even in the books and educational uh, material, whatever is available, so something like menstrual disorders and menstrual hygiene. And, and the commonest menstrual disorder is dysmenorrhea. So that has to be actually addressed properly. And it's not only the, the girl or the, the female uh, around, but it's the society also you have to make because when they are paying, how you look at it at them, that is also extremely important. Otherwise, you know, the, you go back to a, a hidden agenda again to tackle this pain. So, so people around also should actually take cognizance of that particular issue and be a little sympathetic towards them and whatever help you can offer them that you should give that help. That, so the entire society needs to be made aware and educated on this particular aspect. Yeah. I mean, we live in an uh, era wherein there are these free um, free pads uh, machines installed in Kerala already, yes, vending much, machines, yeah. and uh, we are looking at similar installation in other states as well. Absolutely. So we have already come to a stage wherein it is put as a machine right in the school for everyone to go and use it, not just to see or ignore. There is, there's, no, there's no chance of ignoring right there. True. The uh, story method, I, I have seen an NGO using a street um, street theater kind of. True. Wherein they True. just involve people walking by and create awareness in a beautiful theatrical way of uh, spreading the message message obviously as she said it's the um, it's the boys who are growing up and needs to understand the challenges and this up creating the support system is more on them than the than the women the females are already into the suffering mode so it's it's for them and of course uh, the kind of discussions that we have i think uh, right now yes we are still talking about breaking the cheating uh, breaking this cheat uh, cheat chain this should already be how to how to support this entire pain, right? Uh, and I, I think that's exactly where the entire uh, movement is happening, the entire support system creation and probably health health creation as, as well. Okay, so uh, very um, off late, there was a rally where um, kids who are boys and girls both were part of something like this, uh, wherein also an NGO was a uh, part of something like that and they painted their faces to showcase uh, what women go through. And the boys were the front runners to actually uh, take it ahead. So we kind of, uh, I think we need to give due credit to our younger generation. Uh, they definitely know much, much, much more and are aware than we are. Uh, Google is the first thing that they yeah. do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, definitely something that we can um, possibly uh, give the baton to. This entire conversation of dysmenorrhea is going to be incomplete if we don't talk about this wonderful campaign. We'll get all these posters which talks about different types of dysmenorrhea. You can have a look at the entire campaign here.
what we are trying to talk, what are the different aspects and elements, and you'll get information about it in www.painfulperiods.in. Go there, check it out, what is there on the site. You have downloadable posters and leaflets which you can use it in your uh, corporate offices or in colleges or we can use it to circulate amongst our friends, colleagues, everybody we know because this is our prerogative to use and educate everybody around what is dysmenorrhea, how it can be addressed and what are the symptoms around dysmenorrhea. Taking the conversation further, let's talk about, again I'm giving one stats over here, about up to 50% women uh, remain absent in their workplace due to dysmenorrhea. This directly impacts their productivity and all their future aspects as well, which we have already covered, in fact. We have spoken about it. Like, we want to know how do we create this awareness in corporates, schools, colleges, everywhere where women are associated, you know. How can we address this? Nambu Mehta, do you want to go? Uh, in offices? Well, uh, just as uh, just as we discussed, there's that a change in the policy from the government level. Uh, it has to be top down. So uh, a change in the policy from the government level will be great. But just as uh, Zomato changed the entire yeah. um, parental leave, we uh, right now in corporates we already have right support groups. Right. right? It may not be an announced uh, menstrual help for women. Like, that's what I want to add to this. What you're saying, like. There are corporates where everybody is doing workshop, but there are fun workshop, there are motivational workshop, there are every kind of workshop, but nobody talks about dysmenorrhea or anything related to menstrual hygiene or menstrual health and everything. So how do we Absolutely. go about with that? I yeah. mean, um, Women's Week is well is the most one of the well marketed product. I yeah. would rather say mm -hmm. in corporates we have Zumba week yeah. right we for women yoga especially classes, yoga yeah. classes Diet in fact classes, yeah. yeah beauty treatments everything yes. is available but in companies essentially to this area uh, no generally women support themselves right they may carry all those uh, uh, hot water bags and all those support uh, whatever, whatever i mean funniest thing is chocolate and pizza yeah. Right. That's the kind of support that we offer, offer women, offer <laughs> yes. colleague and peer. The moment we hear that yeah. she is suffering, right? However, this entire uh, soft way of supporting or soft way of creating a support system has to move towards a greater, stronger uh, system, as he discussed, to the right. Uh, area right it's not yeah. just taking the medicine but I ide identify when to take what to take so that it doesn't have a, a an impact on uh, on their uh, future health so yeah this is the kind of support system we need to bring in the co companies the I, I, I would be really grateful if uh, painful painful periods start and creates these kind of scenarios create these kind of sessions for the companies where they uh, where they approach the CHROs or the CXOs and have all the employees not just women attend that and create a system in totality. So that, that's yeah. what I would suggest. So like doctor mentioned that exercise is one important element that can help address this problem. Um, maybe both school, both colleges as well as corporates could have mandatory yoga sessions or exercise sessions because not only will you address this problem, you will also address number of other lifestyle problems that women or even males for that matter face. So maybe a yoga session, Zumba sessions, um, I mean, we can Which have a... we already have. Yeah, we have. We have fun Friday in yeah. office. So yeah. why not make it fun the right way? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe put in a, a session dedicated for something like this. And uh, kind of... We don't need to restrict a yoga session or a session on dysmenorrhea only for a Women's Day kind of a thing. It, women's Day is every day. Mm -hmm. Right? Because we are doing our duty day in and day out. Yeah. So might as well do it every day. Uh, I guess I'd like to add that we should, after the Zumba parties, have possibly an hour of uh, nap time uh, yeah, for nap. absolutely yeah. a power nap, which is absolutely required, yeah. and possibly introduce that I'll in vote corporates. For it for sure. Absolutely. And the third bit is we should have pizza and chocolate parties. So that's yeah. something that would help with the motivation <laughs> as well. So that's the third point that I actually yeah. want to talk about. So yeah, that's the way to actually break the stigma for sure. <laughs> And we should have the parties late, <laughs> not early. Not early. Yeah. They'll have the party and run away. <laughs> I 
actually another thing that comes to my mind is uh, i don't know how much offices invest in their ergonomics uh, the seating that we have yeah. in our offices also uh, i don't know if the corporates can no, no, in fact i was when i was working with disney before utv got t- t- uh, taken over by disney okay so utv had a very different culture but disney was very particular about what is the chair like every employee had a ergonomically like we heard for it uh, about it for the first time like they were actually taking care of each chair being comfortable and it was taken made sure that everybody it's not like you're in accounts you will not get that chair you're giving contribute you're contributing to the organization you also get that chair it's like that so many many uh, international mnc's do follow indian companies definitely need yeah, to yeah probably follow they it. need to catch in yeah, yeah. any campaign right health finance anything works on if only it is incentivized yes hmm. and the problem with any health campaign is you do not need any incentive the fact that you would be ignoring it is going to create a far greater problem so i think the focus on running such in uh, such educational programs be it school be it colleges be it anywhere even at malls i think the focus in general needs to be changed so that's my suggestion right and uh, i think on this website uh, pediatpain.in i think there may be scholarly articles and lectures and all which will, will be, be blogs. probably there and, and that is something we have to only bring uh, initiative to see to it that people uh, just approach these websites and they will yeah. get all the information because that is something which I'm is sure there are, be, uh, yeah you yeah. will be able to mr pandit and 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 what is done is an excellent uh, initiative so initiative so that is something which needs to be propagated so all throughout so that will work and it's just a matter of some time that people will be aware yeah. right uh well i guess uh, the campaign itself says why I suffer silently so uh, having a game around it or having yeah. uh, an activity around it is something that um, a corporate could actually uh, make it even more fun uh, for it to be adapted and the yeah. stigma to break it could so be that's more something inclusive absolutely so it it could be from villages to corporates and it wouldn't matter and it would yes. translate yes. i mean we used to play that bingo moment right the moment you hold yourself i mean the moment you find yourself not repeating that mistake you shout shout and say bingo and then everybody claps for you yes. so something like that right uh, which do not need any incentive which do not need any special um, requisition from the company heads something that can be run on a very personal level i think that that kind of a campaign should be run i mean i'm sure painful periods dot dot and will come up with even more even better ways yeah. to uh, engage people not just educate them we'll be so, using the ideas that we have got here and make it bigger obviously that's the idea of using the inputs from all the experts here yeah yeah it is basically it is basically a behavioral change we are talking about right you know any behavioral change uh, takes a generation yes that's true and you know in blue at blue crush uh, it is our you know effort to start this activity uh, as dr mohan said very rightly period you know painful periods dot in right. we have a lot of information sir uh, like you know as a father how can we support your daughter as a brother you can support your daughter we support your sister as a friend how you can support her a lot of scholarly articles are there and we are trying to build in more information right and possibly based on what we feedback we received today we'll try to build up it much better in fact there is a video around fathers day yeah. where the father yes yes and every occasion the women's day mothers yeah. day fathers day even the latest video which we yeah. you know which break you, the cheat chain yeah break the cheat chain you see if you look at the concept of break the cheat chain actually it is not the mother who is the culprit yeah. because she is she is she is ill informed she is ill informed mother's mother is also ill informed yeah, so today we are trying to make aware the yeah. daughter so that the next generation doesn't suffer right yeah. that is our effort that yeah. is our effort that's the only build. way forward right Correct. now yeah what has happened right. has happened and if you look at you know this what this activity we started uh, last year only it will be around a year now uh seacom digital is our partner in developing the entire website and entire information to build it we have got fantastic response from all over india even worldwide wherever we are marketing you know wherever our people can reach out to gynecologists especially and wherever we are reaching out to parents uh, students uh, young girls we are getting fantastic response right you know there is provision if you can go into this website even if you want to educate your employees if you are a, say a hr port professional you can send mail from there there were 17000 mails were sent from our website last year and every month we are getting request 
to go and conduct awareness campaigns, conduct workshops. It is an ongoing process. It is a very small effort, I will tell, because you know India is having 130 <laughs> crore people, you know, 65 crore are women, and maybe 40 crore in this age group. So we can really reach out to them, we do not know. Maybe through this forum, we'll try to reach out to some people. Yes. Yeah. And with uh, people like Dr. Mohan around, we'll certainly have some credibility to talk about this. And uh, one very important factor i like to say here, uh, see, this women health, as far as, as far if you say, it all boils down to sanitary pads. Actually, that is not the issue. Issue is not sanitary napkin. Issue is the holistic management of this problem. When a child is coming to this age, the secondary sexual character development, she doesn't know how to handle her. Even the posture of a girl changes in Indian condition. You know, typically if you see a girl walking in the street, holding her book like this, it has a social stigma attached to it. Please understand. Because we as male do not know how to look at a lady. This is the problem. And you know, all behavior of a girl, so if we start from the day of puberty, yes. uh, we need to look at that. You know, how to handle dysmenorrhea, or how to, how to educate her about menstruation, menarche, maybe you know, less flow in the, less flow during the menstruation, menopause, all these aspects need to be taught. It is there in the curriculum. Right. <laughs> Does really school teach about it? They don't teach about it. Yes. I'll tell you my experience, it is not only for girls, it is also needed for boys. In a boy, when the secondary sexual character develops, he also doesn't know yeah. whom to ask. If you ask your friends, they laugh at you. Huh. <laughs> so you lose your friendship for life. Yes. It took me to, till my graduation to understand what change is going on in my body. Of course, it is long back, <laughs> 40 years back. But even today, I'm sure a young boy must be suffering like this. Mm -hmm. These are areas which need to be looked into. Uh, no, I don't think government has to do it. We have to do it. We have to do it. Maybe as corporate citizen, we are trying to play our role. And maybe professionals can play their role. Doctors can play their role. Professionals like you can play your role. That will be my sincere and humble submission. Uh, so I'd like to add to the wonderful knowledge that we just shared. Blue Cross, I think, is doing a fantastic job of initiating something that is so hard. I had a very cool mother. Uh, not everybody is blessed by uh, with talking to them uh, at an early age. So I wish that um, I'm definitely voting for being a co corporate trainer. I will very be very, very happy to spread awareness for the campaign. Being a woman, um, definitely. I'm, I'm with you and uh, vote for um, improving the conditions that we have in India for sure. So congratulating, uh, you know, further on the initiative, wonderful initiative of uh, uh, Why Suffer Silently. Uh, I, I remember, uh, you know, watching uh, uh, Sadhguru recently saying that if you would want to bring any change in the community, it, it can't be, you know, just addressing one individual or a group. It has to be on a moment basis. So this should be a moment. And looking at the different stakeholders, there are not one, there are many stakeholders, I would say, in the community. For Because this is a change that we are asking a person to change the behavior, which is the most difficult one. So there is no policy guideline which will uh, help us change. Uh, we can take example of the recent change in the vehicle, uh, you know, uh, fine that has been implemented. We say it is too, too much to ask for. But we don't follow that, you know, we should follow rules. So behavioral change is something which will happen with movement. All the stakeholders, perhaps I would uh, uh, say not only government, but uh, even the community participation uh, is of utmost important because if you look at the current situation, this is not their priority. For a family, uh, you know, this kind of situations may not, uh, they would want to rather go for uh, an daily uh, wage earnings and then, you know, for their uh, feeds rather than talking about pain and dysmenorrhea and etc. So those things should be, uh, you know, uh, considered when we talk about uh, bringing in a change. A lot of uh, partners, uh, stakeholders, uh, there are corporates, uh, there is CSR under the, uh, with the uh, corporates, uh, there is uh, the NGOs or the developmental sector that perhaps are uh, talking about, talking on menstruation as a subject, but it needs to be extended to 
understand dysmenorrhea as well. So this is something which cannot be ignored. So whatever the platforms could be schools, could be colleges that we have discussed around. So th those could be the opportunities where we can really uh, look at uh, to implement those activities. But uh, advocacy at all these, to these, all these partners is very, very important. So this should actually get onto a moment uh, size. Yeah. See, to share with you, it all started with, you know, uh, the thought process, you know, menstruation is normal. But period is normal, period pain is not. And that is what you talk about in this website. And we request every lady, do not suffer silently. Why suffer silently? And consult the immediate, immediate available doctor, the gynecologist. Possibly he or she would be the right person to guide you throughout your life. So period pain is not normal. It is not normal to suffer from. Do not suffer silently. Please consult a doctor. Panchanandji, since you mentioned that you have already started championing the cause, would you want to share any, um, I'm sure she yeah. will also no, ask no, you want to ask, <laughs> yes. but out of your curiosity, would you yes, want to sure. share any uh, any live, uh, any Examples. example or any incident that you remember? Anything that uh, actually you uh, See, I remember, you know, we conduct these workshops, as I said, you. even before, you know, starting this website, I was in a place called Merit. And we got invitation to conduct this workshop in a nursing school. Now, when I went to the nursing school, I would be, you know, unfortunately, the doc gynecologist who has to accompany us, she had some problems, she could not accompany us. Now, we are committed. So, me and the sales manager, we went there. And we told the principal, this is the issue, can we take the session? So, we took the session. So, we surprised uh, these nursing students. And all of them now are not our first year students. And they have no idea about this period, period pain, and all these factors. When you talk to them, these are the changes that take place in your body with our own simple way, because we cannot certainly talk like a doctor. We say we'll certainly talk like a layman, we did that. Now we, to our utter surprise, we found that they have no idea about it. They know this is what is happens. Uh, they call it in Hindi some specific terminology, and they have no idea why this happens or what is the outcome from it. <laughs> Uh, then we had a nice session with them. Around 200 students were there in the auditorium. And, uh, you know, by the time we finished our session, most of these young girls were coming up to us and talking in very open terms their problems they're going through. And then we suggested all of them, the gynecologist who had to accompany us, please meet them. And out of those 200 odd students, 100 odd students were having this problem. This problem. And they said that this is the day, the first day of the menses, Dr. Mohan. So we cannot do anything. As both of you, Dr. Prabhu and Dr. Mohan are saying, first day we cannot do anything. And we dread this day every month in our life. So this is what I remember immediately. There are many anecdotes I can share with you in the last 12, 13 years. Uh, this is a social stigma sort of thing. We need to get out of it. We should not allow this to continue like this. We must get out of it. One important thing I uh, missed, out, yeah. missed uh, out was closer yeah. because uh, was you know we say all good beginnings happen at home, so we should start and start discussing this subject at home, which perhaps uh, may not be uh, the situation, as you rightly put across when you came here that your mother asked for, and it should start with us yes. uh, from our own homes to start discussing with our. No. In fact, we want to add to that only. Like girls, they don't know, young girls, they don't know how to tackle menorrhea, dysmenorrhea. But then the thing is, how do they go to their parents? The parents also don't, you know, take it very seriously. So that again is something, you know, with the young girls, that's a problem that it doesn't get addressed at their parent level only. No, uh, perhaps if you, you know, biologically, if I look at, uh, it is said that daughters are uh, close to father. Right. But unfortunately, this topic... Uh, they can't discuss. They can't discuss. Yeah. Or they don't discuss because of the social or cultural yeah. uh, environment that we have uh, given. So that has to change. So that, that they can discuss uh, freely uh, as one opportunity where you write a letter to mother. I would say you write a letter to parents. Uh, don't ignore yeah. a father there. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, like how she, uh, Mona also said PTA. PTA is a good form where people, we, we can do workshops 
in PTA and you know talk about it. No, and besides, if this is part of curriculum yeah. in schooling, yeah. so it will come from the, uh, the girl or teacher. the student uh, herself. Yes. Yeah, and in fact, she may be the one who will probably take a lead and speak to her mother, Ki, I need to go and see the doctor. See the doctor, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it is menstrual hygiene and menstrual, uh, this thing, it's a normal physiology, so it has to be a part of education, educational program. So, so dysmenorrhea or period pain, there has to be, say, one or two paragraphs on dysmenorrhea, period pain, yeah. So unbearable, don't bear, go to the doctor, seek medical advice, get yourself worked up. Mm -hmm. It's, it's something which is very commonly seen, 20-80% of the uh, girls uh, at the first menstruation probably they suffer, somebody suffer more, somebody suffer less, but whenever you suffer too much or whenever you suffer with pain, it's better to take a medical advice, find out, rule out any pathologies inside, because often you have pathologies, and that's something which cannot be ignored. If there are no pathologies, then you confirm that there are no pathologies, then probably have some conservative mechanisms or more modalities to teach this and counsel them and so that they have a proper behavioral change and let the education come from students itself. Right. Yeah. Actually, and in, especially when you have a website like this, you yeah. have something called as periodpain.in now. Yeah. So why don't you take this? Like, I'm going to go back to my mom and show her this website so that you know, at least I can enlighten her. Of course, now she's a senior citizen, but she has gone through this all her life. So she better know about it. And if you have important, videos, you yeah. have pictures which explain things better, yeah. why not use it? And use you it. have platforms, so yeah. might as well just use them. Yeah. If you see this break the chitchen, chitchen cleave, yeah. it talks about that only. Absolutely. You know, the daughter yeah. says to mother, you have cheated. Actually, she has not cheated. Yeah, she hurt herself. Yeah, she actually herself is a victim, so right. there is no question of she being cheated. I mean, and the mother is telling to the grandmother, you also cheated. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, you know, they are not informed about it. Yeah, they and they all were cheated actually. Correct. See. So they all have uh, been another anecdote, you know, November I remember is I was in Ranchi ten years back. I met a senior gynecologist in a missionary hospital and I was discussing with her about it, and I found her very receptive. When I spoke to her, I saw a little tear coming in her eyes. She's a senior gynecologist. So I said, ma'am, uh, you know, we want to conduct a lot of activities. So you should know any school every year. And you would volunteer to take these sessions. We'll provide you all material. Even we will organize everything. But you have to put a word to the school people. Because we going and approaching them, you will not have the credibility when you said that. And then she had a little, you know, bit of tear. I could see it. And she wiped it like this. Uh, she said, you know, I am not a very strong economical background. I'm from a poor, poor background. And when I grew up, I suffered a lot. And I never thought that I should contribute back to the society. You have come to me. I'll certainly do. You don't have to do anything. You mail me all your material. I'll organize every camp because I myself is a trustee of the schools in Yadra. So all the school, I'll conduct this camp. I'll conduct it every year. But I will let you know through mails. Even today, I get a mail from her, from, from her every year when she conducts the campaign. Normally, she does it in the beginning of the session maybe in the month of May or June, when all young girls coming in, mm -hmm. she takes this session, teaches them what is dysmenorrhea, what is menstruation, what is dysmenorrhea, what is aminorrhea, all these factors. And possibly the children are a little more enlightened. Yeah. This is how I look at it. And that situation still, you know, I remember that situation, even I remember her face now. <laughs> In fact, now, uh, Dr. Gadam, like you see so many patients at your clinic every day. How can we spread awareness about dysmenorrhea amongst all your patients? Like, you know, if we can put up posters or, you know. Yeah, we can definitely put up posters in the clinics. In the clinics in your consulting, outside at the reception, and uh, probably have the pamphlets also and pass it on to the, right. uh, the, the, the patients as well as their parents uh, who are actually suffering uh, with uh, menstrual pain and they can also help in distributing it to their colleagues yes. and all. So that kind of a campaign can be done. The campaigns can be done at schools. There has to be, I mean, um, uh, social visits to the schools by the doctors and counseling about menstrual hygiene. And this manner is part of menstrual hygiene yes. that you need to be taken care of. And 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 the headmistresses and the, okay. the lady teachers in the school, they can have group discussions. The NGOs are there. So there are many, many avenues. And now Google is there, and there's a website. So uh, even if you put a poster saying that, okay, refer, don't suffer in silence, refer to 
period dot in i think yeah. that is good enough for everybody to understand and they'll go and Check and and one person will pass it on to many many more yeah uh, one important point here this google professor is of type little <laughs> 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 i would i would still like her to come to you uh, <laughs> there is something called period pain there is something called abnormal period yeah. pain and you need to see uh, opinion or from a doctor right. even if that much goes in your head i think that is good enough for people to uh, go to the doctors and obviously doctor is not going to say that okay okay you keep suffering yeah, pain obviously <laughs> obviously he will evaluate the patient and he will yes. probably give a right advice yeah my only concern is the google professor many time instead of guiding is guide patients <laughs> so <laughs> i agree so i would prefer two doctors are here i would prefer the patient to come to you maybe little information from the google is okay <laughs> but they should take all information from you. creating awareness <laughs> it is only for creating awareness not for making or treating the patient yes. yeah so, it is only for creating awareness perhaps what yeah. i look at uh, as a opportunity here instead of uh, instead of going to google sorry instead of going to google they can come to painful period dot in they will get all information yes. uh, you know uh, in in every clinic today you will have a, a tv right so the uh, video has developed as break the cheat uh, chain such videos can be uh, uh, informative videos can be developed and then throughout it can run through those clinics where patients are waiting and they can watch uh, then there is something which has a provision uh, as iec cell so you can understand the importance of uh, a vertical cell in the system where it talks about information education and communication so there you have lot of uh, avenues to uh, you know communicate or talk about all this to create awareness in different ways it could be posters interactions you know skit plays yes. so those are the things which perhaps would help uh, generate yes. more awareness continuing the conversation i would like to pose this question to all our um, uh, women panelists lady panelists sorry uh like if we have to carry a kit just to be on a safer side during a menstruation and everything what what is it that you would like to carry and how 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 do you keep yourself safe and um so i guess essentials definitely is uh, pads that we have to carry uh, a change of clothes definitely and uh, recommended uh, definitely something like a meftal spas which helps in kind of ease the pain a bit a little bit um and i think uh, possibly um, a towel or a napkin and things like that i think that that should be the essential uh, kits that i would anything possibly anything that you recommend. all want to add to it yeah i i happen to use the kit right and meftal spa strips uh, it definitely helps right to me uh, when i when i came across it for the first time i i did not expect a product like that to find in india my my bad but when i used it it was actually helpful right i i have a life wherein i cannot wait my life cannot wait i cannot spend a time an hour away from my work so if i have to be that strong and that effective these kind of uh, I, I, since i used it i know it 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 was very really effective the pain was gone there was no side effect right and uh, essentially it did not i mean it it made my day very easy so yeah i i know that okay awesome so on that note let's do something fun and quirky because uh, we've been talking a lot of serious things just adding a new uh, touch to it we will do a rapid fire round where each of you have to answer with a yes or a no placard all of you have a yes or a no placard with you so i will shoot the questions and you all have to answer okay do you think a majority of women for long have suffered silently uh, suffered period pain silently and other menstruation related problems you'll have to keep one down okay nice okay do you think indian society is very insensitive about menstruation like it's interesting to see everybody is in sync with the conversation there is no disagreement on this do you think school boys should be sensitized about periods i think i know the answer <laughs> Are you aware that there are temples in India that organize annual festivals to celebrate the menstruation of Mother Earth? Yes, everyone should. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you think that officers in India should have a first day of period leave policy? I think. Yes. 
Do you think that presenteeism being present just physically and non-mentally is practiced by a large number of girls and women? Okay, do you think that gynecological well-being should be made a part of the mainstream education and not just be limited to holding an occasional Absolutely. workshop? Absolutely. Awesome. Okay, I think we should keep the no card away then. <laughs> <laughs> do you really believe that we will one day live in a society that doesn't see menstruation as a taboo? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So on that note, we conclude our session. It was a wonderful session. Thank you all of you for coming and contributing and giving your opinion in every way because this opinion is something, this will be the voice for the future, for the next generation. Maybe it would be passed down and everybody would use as a reference and maybe many people would take inspiration from here and you know extrapolate it and take it to another level but this definitely is the first step towards it because we have all been speaking about menstruation periods but nobody has spoken ever about uh, dysmenorrhea and period pains you know so this is the beginning and we all should contribute in our own way in our in uh, in our capacity and our frame of things and let's hope that this is the new beginning thank you thank you all of you absolutely thank you so much and humbled and happy to be a part of uh, an initiation which it's personal, uh, definitely a personal uh, thing as a woman uh, right. to address. Thank you. Uh, can I add? Yeah, wonderful forum. Thank you. And, uh, but all that we need to remember is that this is just an initiative. Right. The task <laughs> is hurricane. Yes. yes. And the beginning is good, but it has to be carried on. Carried and it on. has to be sustained and maintained. True. Exactly. So it'll take years for us to really achieve the goal. Yes, 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 yes everywhere. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes. Dr. Gadam, yes. absolutely. What I find, uh, what I truly appreciate about painful periods, Dr. Ness, they have, they are, they're not just stopping the cheat chain, they are moving from apathy to yeah. creating a support system yes. so that everybody is on the same same health yes. plane. They're right? Right, right now setting the ball rolling. I totally, suppose. totally. Yeah. And the kind of uh, experiences that you shared, I um, I really believe that that kind of experience sharing, I think that that should be multiplied because more and more social champions, social ambassadors should come up and champion the cause. Uh, in social media, in, uh, in or, or offline, if if there's any way that we can support, definitely it would be it would be an honor for us. Awesome. So well, yes, it's an absolute honor to be a part of uh, an, a campaign like this. Of course, yeah, periods are natural, but period pain definitely is not natural. So uh, I think all of us will voice that same opinion. We should follow this website that you know these guys have put such a lot of effort to make, and not only enlighten ourselves but also our community at large. So right. of course, the, at least we've taken the first baby step, uh, and we're sure we'll run very soon in this in this forum. Yes. Uh, indeed, it was a uh, privilege and pleasure to be a part of this uh, forum. And uh, I, I see this uh, beginning of uh, a moment that right. just we discussed. So all the best to all of us and to everyone. Yeah. Yeah, social media is very powerful. I did say that, you know, changes takes a generation to happen. But social media is so powerful, it can happen a little faster. Yeah. I feel privileged to be part of this panel and talking to all of you. And I wish things will happen sooner, not later. Yes. Thank you. This menorrhea now, as we all are more aware of it after the session, which talks about period pain, which we are aware now that most of us, apart from this close group, are not aware. So this is the drive that we are taking towards making it bigger, reaching out to more people, and creating a lot of awareness. We have got expert panelists on board. Like we had doctors, we had HR heads, we had business coach, we had professors, all coming together to talk about it and find a solution. And in a way, we have figured out what are the measures that we can take to address this entire problem. Now the next step that is remaining, the daunting task of executing it. Ideation is always simple, but executing is really important. So let's make it big. And we reach out to all of you to make it like a big campaign for us. Reach out to our website, www.periodpains.in. Take down the brochures. Understand what is the literature saying. Use it for your reference. Visit all the gynecs. We have expert gynecs here on board with us. You can talk to them. Reach out to them. Reach out to all the doctors you know around you. And let's make it big.